Hi, everybody. In this video, I'm back working in Unit 9, and I am on the Startup Worksheet. And what I've done so far is I've just entered the value of 350000 into cell B31. So in this scenario, we're assuming that we're going to get $350,000 from investors for this company. So we're adding that in here um, at that additional value. And when you do, a couple of things will update automatically, and you'll see that go through on your end. So I'm going to do a little bit more updating of my worksheets. I'm going to go to my investment analysis worksheet next. All right, and then we're going to start filling in some of the information here. So in cell B6, which is right up top, I'm actually going to use um, my other worksheet as the lead there. So I'm going to hit equal sign. I am going to put a negative there, and I'll explain that in one minute. And we're going to go back to that startup sheet. And we're going to click that cell B31 uh, there. And then we're going to use that value here um, in our um, investment analysis worksheet. So we're just linking that in here. That way, if I change it in the other worksheet, it updates here automatically. And I don't have to keep changing it over and over again. Now, the reason why I have it as a negative in this particular worksheet is because we are planning to repay our investors. So we're kind of thinking of this like a loan. So even though it starts as money coming in for our company, we do have to actually pay that back, right, is, is the goal here. Um, because our investors want to make money, right? They want to make their money back and then some. So at the bare minimum, we do need to repay this money to our investors and then also offer them more than that. So an incentive that why they would invest in our company, hopefully because they're going to make a lot of money, right? So it's negative here. because This is something that we would owe our investors back um, theoretically here. In cell B7, for yearly payments, we're going to do these as 80000 In cell B8, we're going to enter five as a total number of payments. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to calculate the interest rate. So let's think about what's going on here. So our investors have given us $350,000 upfront. We're saying that we're going to repay them yearly. So just one time a year, $80,000 for five years. So if you think about this, $80,000 times five is $400,000. So we're paying them back more than the 350, right? We're giving them extra. Um, that's their incentive. Hey, invest with us, and then our company's going to make money. So you're going to make you're going to make money too. Um, so let's think about what kind of interest rate our investors would be getting then, right? Because they're making more than their original 350,000. So we can use the formula here equals rate, and then we're going to go ahead and click um, cell B8 for the number of payments. Comma, we're going to click cell B7 for 80,000 per year, comma, and then we're going to click cell B6 because that is the starting present value. Um, and again, the other values, remember, in brackets are optional if you want or need to enter them. So our investors are getting a return rate of 4.62% based on the current, um, the current values here. All right, so we're gonna look at this in a little bit more detail here. So in year one, we're gonna go and enter. Um, I'm gonna enter the formula B7 again. Um, I am gonna add dollar signs in here though to fix this. All right, so I'm gonna keep going back to entering um, those dollar signs here, because I want to copy it across. I apologize, I had my phone ringing, so I just wanted to pause the video there. Um, and then what we're going to do here, theoretically, is pay them $80,000, um, let's say, at the end of each year for five years. So again, I'm just going to copy that right across here. And the dollar signs fix that number, so I don't have to worry about it changing. All right, so then in B13 through F13, we're going to use the following for dividends. So in year one, we're going to use zero. In year two, we're also going to use zero. And again, I'm just following along with the steps in your text, um, what they're recommending here. In year three, we're going to say 12,000. In year four, 25,000. And then in year five, 43,000. 
So these are the additional um, monies that the investors are receiving as well. Um, so they're estimating zero dividends for year one and two, because it's unlikely that the company is going to make any profit or if they do very little profit. Um, so we would not want to be giving out extra um, you know, returns in those first two years. But we're thinking by the end of years three, four, and five, we should be making good profit based on all of our calculations so we could pay our investors extra monies on top of that. Um, so 12,000 in year three, 25,000 in year four, and 43,000 in year five. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just sum this up. I can use the auto sum feature here, um, but just by highlighting that and going across and it just sums going down or you can sum them individually as well, that's fine. So we're just gonna sum up our totals here. So you can see in year one and two, we're still just paying 80,000, but in year three, we're looking at 92,000, 105,000 in year four and 123,000 in year five. All right, so next let's go through some of these payments. Um, in more detail here. So in cell B18, I'm going to enter the formula um, for B6. So I'm just going to kind of bring this value right down there, right? Because that's what we're starting with, right? We borrowed 350,000, so to say. All right. And then in B19, we're going to use B14. In B20, we're going to use C14. In B21, we're going to use, let's see, D14. B22, E14. And then finally, for year five, we'll use that 123,000. Um, I do have to do those manually because I'm going from a horizontal to a vertical. So it's only five cells. It's not too bad to just type those in. And then for our ranges, um, let's see, going next, we're going to do a quick analysis feature here. So I'm going to go ahead and select my cells. And that little quick analysis button will pop up here. And if I look, I'm going to go to totals. And you want to be careful here. There's different kinds of sums. So notice how in this sum, the total goes to the bottom, whereas in this sum, it goes to the right. And I want this one here because I want it to do a running tally the whole way down for me. If I just click the one with the sum highlighted on the bottom, you can see it just adds the total going down, which is not really what I want. I would like it to kind of go through that running tally on the right side there. Um, so we're going to look at that feature for our running um, sum here. So let's see, I want to do a total, I need to go over further, and I want the one that says running. Um, so this will like calculate it all the way down, taking into account each payment along the way. And again, I want the one going down the column. So I'm going to click that, and you can see what's happening. So we start with that $350,000 investment. We pay our investors back 80,000. So now we're down 270. We pay them back another 80, we're down 190. We pay them back 92 and so on. So, um, you know, at the end of year three, we're still paying back that 350,000. But by the end of year four, we paid it back plus an extra 7,000 on top. And then by the end of year five, our investors are getting an extra 130,000 altogether. Um, so they're seeing some potentially good profit there, which is more than just the 40,000 that they saw up here when we were just doing $80,000 as our payments. All right, so we're gonna do some final calculations here. Um, so for cell C25, we're gonna enter our desired rate of return here at 10%. And again, this is something that you'd have to think about with your company and see what you expect um, your rate of return to be over the years. And we'll talk about these numbers in a second here. I just want to go through the formulas first. So for cell B26, we're going to use the net present value formula, the NP, um, NPV here, uh, or N, yeah, NPV. So did I say that right? All right, so the rate we're going to use is the C25. And then our values are going to be B19 through B23. Again, I'm not going to select that negative at the beginning. I'm just selecting those payments that we're looking at. Now, even though this says net present value, it doesn't really quite work that same way. We're actually going to subtract as well here. Or I guess we're going to add because we have a negative. So we're going to take that B18, our initial debt, 
and we're going to add it with our C26. And this gives you that difference there. So you can see that you have $6,054. And then our last calculation here um, for C28 is going to be uh, looking at the internal rate of return. So before we get there, you can kind of play around a little bit with that um, desired rate of return and see what happens as you try 12% or as you try um, 8% and so on and how those values change. So it's important to have a, um, a reliable or a, as accurate estimate as you can. Um, so what's going on here and what we're kind of starting to look at is the time value of money. So when we think about money, you know, you probably think of it pretty straightforward, but there's actually a time element to it. So a perfect example of this, um, or just think of it as a base level. So let's say someone gave you $100 um, today, right? Well, with that $100, obviously you could spend it, but you could invest it. So if you happen to invest it in an account that earns, let's say 5% um, annually, then next year you actually have $105. So with that year of time, it's grown by $5. So if someone said to you, hey, I have $100, do you want it today or do you want it in a year? Well, that actually makes a difference because if you have it today, you actually could have $105 in a year rather than just 100. Um, so a lot of it depends on what we expect our rate of return to be over that, that time period here. Um, so it does depend. Um, inflation is another big thing too, where money today may not be worth as much as money given later um, because of inflation, right? So if inflation is going up 6% and you have that $100 given today versus given in a year, it actually has different values because the amount that things cost have changed. Um, so you have less buying power with that $100 a year from now than you did previously, as an example. Um, so there is a time element here to money as well that has to be taken into account, uh, which can get a little bit um, a little bit tricky here. So what we're seeing as we go through um, these calculations, basically, um, is one, you know, you do want to give a desired or a approximate rate of return here. Um, typically, the rate of return is higher when there's more risk, lower when there's less risk um, in general. Um, so you can expect higher return rates typically with riskier accounts. Um, because this is a startup or a newer company, this would be pretty risky to invest in. You don't know that it's going to have a good profit. Um, so we'd be looking to, again, give our investors um, a good reason to invest with us, that they would get a high rate of return for, for their investment. Um, obviously hoping that we make it through um, as well. And what this other value does here, this net present value, is it's a way for different investors to compare um, different investment options or opportunities. So for instance, this $6,054, um, basically what it says is that the $350,000 investment in the company is worth $6,054 more than placing the same amount in a different investment that pays 10%. Um, so basically the higher net present value, the sort of better investment opportunity that is. Now it gets a little bit tricky. That's not always hundred percent the case, but in general, that's sort of how it works. So if an investor has lots of different options, um, net present value is one way they can compare those um, and look for a higher net present value to show that that's worth more um, of their, their money. Another good thing to look at here is what's called the internal rate of return. So that's the next thing that we're going to calculate. Um, and basically it's the return rate when the net present value is zero. Um, so if this was zero, it basically gives that rate there. Um, and if you play around the numbers here, so notice how when we went up to 12, then our net present value was negative, meaning that this would not be a good investment comparison for our investors. Um, when I go to 11, it's still negative, but not as such. If I go to 10.5, again, I'm now in the positive. So it looks like there's some value in between here where I do start to hit close to zero. So that is what we're looking for here. That is the IRR. Now we don't wanna just guess at it though. We wanna actually calculate it. Um, so that's what we can do here. So in my next step, I'm gonna to go to cell C28. I'm gonna use equal IRR. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and select the values. And I'm gonna go ahead and select here uh, B18 all the way through B23. So I'm giving the initial um, 
investment with all the payments back to the investors for the first five years. And I get here 10.62%. Um, so this is sort of that zero value for net present value um, is 10.62%. Now, again, this gives our investors something else to compare. Um, and typically the higher the IRR, again, the better the investment choice. So if I was an investor and I see that, hey, this company has a higher net present value and a higher IRR, I may be more likely to invest in it than another option. Um, it's not 100% given though. So sometimes there could be more than one IRR depending on um, how complicated the payments can get. If there's a lot of negative and positive back and forth, it can get a little bit trickier. Um, so again, these are just two things that investors can look at um, to compare investments here, but um, you need to go a little bit deeper as well. Um, another thing that you could do too is kind of graph um, for different options. So you can, um, instead of the net present value, um, you know, we could kind of create a, a graph instead. So graph the net present value for each investment against different possible rates of return. And that can give you a, a broader picture as an investor. Now, finally, in this video, um, the last thing I want to mention is there are two other functions. Um, so there is a function, it would be equal sign, and it's X and PV, um, and another one, XIRR, which basically do the same thing that we have been doing for NPV and IRR, but they allow for payments that do not come at equal intervals. Um, so if you look in your text, they do have an example there um, where the payments, instead of being every year at the same time, they come more sporadically. And these two functions can be used instead um, with those types of investments. Um, so again, as always, um, it does help to kind of go through the text. There's a lot of good background information here. Um, so I do recommend um, looking at that as well. So the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my income statement. And I'm going to just kind of finish this up and sell B33. I'm going to bring in these dividends here. So I'm going to type in an equal sign. I'm going to go to my investment analysis um, worksheet, and I'm going to go ahead and click cell B13, where my first dividend was. Hit enter. I'm going to go ahead and copy those over. And again, you just want to double check that everything copied correct, correctly. If I compare it, I can see that it did. And then I'm going to go to cell B35 here and enter the following formula. So I'm going to do cell um, B31. And then I'm going to subtract cell B33. And again, I'm going to go ahead and just copy this formula over. Make sure that it's actually copying the right way here. So C31 minus C33 and so on. So finally, we have sort of our, our final kind of profit projection here. Um, once we have our, our taxes and everything, and then we pay out our shareholders, um, their dividends, we're down 70, almost 75,000. And then next year, we start to see a little bit of profit. And then finally, in the later years, we finally do start to see some potential profit here. Um, so we do have quite a lot of information here we're taking into account. And again, this is probably more of a basic example, too. There's probably more going on here. Um, but again, we want to really consider our different costs along the way, consider any sort of expenses that we can think of as well. Um, take into account things like depreciation, um, you know, other kinds of costs interest costs from our loans, um, taxes as well, dividends or other payments to shareholders, um, et cetera. So there's quite a lot to take in here um, to just kind of consider what our potential income would be.